Hello everyone. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to make puppets fly. So it's actually pretty simple. It's really similar to our um, swimming tutorial that we did. Just basically going to be changing a little bit of keyframing and of course we got to do a little bit of control change. So I'm going to go ahead and delete a couple things on this puppet here that's going to be open. I already have this scene set up, and of course it's on the Dream of Verse for you to follow along the tutorial. It's just a score giving ring that we're going to fly through. And then of course I have a score, and then a thing that displays the score. I thought it would be a little bit better than just an empty scene with something to fly up to. So, alright, this is what we're going to go ahead and do. Gonna go ahead and open up our gadgets menu. Then I'm gonna get out a microchip. And I'm gonna open up our controller logic. And I just had a video on puppet interfaces, so we're gonna use a lot of this puppet interface. Uh, other than that, we are, of course, gonna be using our left stick and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. I'm going to open the properties first, I'm going to just label it, label it as flying, get a nice baby blue color. Alright. Now, first things first, what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and get a puppet inter interface out from our gameplay gear section, it's the very last item. Put it in our microchip that we just made. And we want to open up the properties of this. And if you aren't familiar with this, I kind of recommend watching my previous video, which was on puppet interfaces. But we're going to go to the second page, and we want that double jump option. And so we're going to go ahead and open up the properties of our puppet as well. And we're going to give it a 0.1 meter double jump height. So we can easily get a double jump register. So when we double jump, we're going to go ahead and start flying. So let's go ahead and get a signal manipulator out. Actually, you know what? No, we're going to get out a counter because we want to be able to reset it easily. And we're going to get this double jump input here. And it's going to go ahead and increase the count of our counter. And we want it so if we press X again, we get to uh, reset our double our flying. So I'm going to go ahead and get this counter full. Output of our counter, plug it into an AND gate. AND gate is in the logical processing section. Go ahead and grab that now. Next. Let's go ahead and set up our nodes for inputs. So logic and processing, let's get a node out. And open up the properties of this. I'm going to go ahead and name it. We want one for left stick. And of course, um, we're going to be doing like kind of an aimed approach, meaning that we'll do like a hover mode. And you can also do L1 and R2 to go like Superman mode and you can aim around a bit. So we want to get the left stick and we want to get L2. We get R2. We're going to get L1 and R1. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and open up our controller logic board right here. I'm going to go ahead and hook up all 
the plugs for this from our controller sensor. So first we get our left stick input, and we want L2, R2, and L1, R1. Alright, now that we have all that set up, we can go ahead and get input here, and we are actually missing one. We want the uh, X input. Alright, and that should be pretty easy, it's just right here, plug it right in. And now, let's go ahead and continue with our little setup up right here. So we want to make it so when we double jump, or when we jump and we already have the counter full, we're going to go ahead and reset our counter. So we got A plugged in already, and now it kind of doesn't look like it because I did this thing. And we're going to get the X input, but we don't actually want to get the X input directly, or else we could just instantly reset it. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a signal manipulator, and we're going to open up the properties of it, and we're going to turn the pulse on and put on. That way, it will do a pulse, and it should, if I'm not mistaken, activate just as a pulse. So we should get like, if if this is not run frame perfect by the game, we should get a uh, the correct behavior that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and go into modes, test mode, oh man, I'm going to just turn this off for now because I don't want to deal with that cutscene every single time. <laughs> so I'm going to go to modes, test mode, and then I'm going to turn on unlock camera. Yep, that works. Alright. So, now that we have that, let's go ahead and let's find out what to do next. So we want to, first of all, make our puppet float. And we also want to be able to move around. So, what we're going to do is, let's see here, we're going to get a keyframe, and then this is going to disable gravity on our puppet. So, make sure you go, go ahead and scope out of the puppet if you're scoped in, open up the properties, and I believe, yeah, we just need to turn off the gravity right here, the slider. Just turn it down all the way to zero. Now, when we hit play, we should just start flying up. Oh hey, we actually move. I did not expect that. I think that's because we have air control. I don't want to have air control when we're flying, because I want it to only be from our control input from here. So I'm going to go ahead and also turn off air control. Next, I'm going to go ahead and get a advanced mover from our movers and output section. And this counter is also going to go ahead and turn on this advanced mover. And we're going to pretty much do what we did in our swimming tutorial to get this to work. When we're flying, I want to be able to go faster. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to be able to go faster than if we were just walking, so let's do about 7 meters a second. And we're also going to do up and down, let's say 4. So it's a bit faster than swimming, but it's uh, not as slow. And I'm going to go ahead and make everything 100%, including dampening. Uh, you can make the dampening in the X a little bit less if you want a little bit of deceleration speed. Alright, and I'm going to go back into our gadgets menu, logic and processing, and we want to get a splitter. 
And we also want to get a combiner. Alright. Next, we want to get L2 and R2. That is not what we want. We want L1 and R1. That's going to get... L1 is going to go bring us down, so negative, And R1 is going to bring us up, so positive in our combiner. And that's going to go and plug into our Y speed. Next, we want to split our left stick. And that's going to go ahead and... We got X, so that's going to go into our X, and then Y. It's going to go into our Z. So now we should be able to move up and down as if we're floating. Like this. Probably want to turn off animations, but hey. You can just go up all the way over here. And then drop down. We could even go to the ground, I think. I don't think we set that up yet. I also want touching the ground to turn off uh, our thing. So if we do on ground, that's also going to reset our counter here the, from the puppet interface. And that's on the second page, I believe. Yep, right here. Should be lit up because our puppet's technically on the ground at this moment. And we're also going to open up this keyframe and we're going to turn off the animation, the procedural animation. So we're going to go to the behavior and the properties and we're going to turn off procedural walk. Alright. So now we're not going to get that weird walking animation. Oh shoot. <laughs> Died to the hazard cube. All right, so that's pretty basic flying. Um, if you want, of course, you can set up an animation for moving and all that kind of stuff. If you've seen the swimming tutorial, you know how to do that. But first, I feel like we just need a simple pose for flying. So. That's what I'm going to do. It's just a simple pose. So I'm going to use this same keyframe here to edit the pose for flying. And I'm going to turn on, make it mirrored. Okay, to me. It's not that great, but it works. It works. Okay. Now, what else do we need? Yes, our advanced, our more advanced flying. Like Superman flying. So, that's pretty easy. All we want to do is we're going to get another keyframe out. And we're going to edit the properties of our puppet. And we want to turn off all procedural animation, I believe. Uh, well, no. Let's just see if this works first. Because I've had issues in the past with rotating puppets to be anything but upright. So I think this might work, but I'm not 100%. So let's go ahead and just get a rotator here. Or advanced rotator, I mean. And we need an AND gate as well. And this AND gate is going to interrupt our power signal here. And of course, it's going to plug back in to the mover. So we're interrupting the power from our mover with an AND gate. So instead of the counter going directly to the advanced mover, we're going into an AND gate first. Then the AND gate goes into the power of our mover. 
And then we want to get a not gate. And that's going to plug into B. And then our left stick is going to go ahead and plug into our, not left stick, but L2. We want to get a calculator actually, because we want to, for even barely touching the L2, we want it to activate. So we're going to open up our calculator and we're doing greater than, so this side, if it's even above the right side, which is B, so left side is greater than right side, then we will output 1 for true. So we're going to get the result from the calculator and we're going to plug it into our NOT gate. Then L2, that's going to go ahead and plug into our calculator. So when we are holding down L2, we are no longer going to be using our advanced mover here. And instead we're going to get a simple mover. And we're also going to get a AND gate as well. Another one. Now we're going to plug in the calculator too. And of course our counter full. That's going to plug into both our advanced rotator and our basic mover that we just got. Let's see if I can organize it any bit. Alright. And now R2 is going to go ahead and apply thrust. So we're going to get that R2 output and it's going to plug into the speed of our mover. Have it come down like so. And then we're going to go ahead and open up our mover properties. We want 100% movement strength, 100% overall dampening, and then local space. Forward speed is 7 meters a second. And we might even want to get a camera. So in our gadgets, cameras and lighting, we're going to go ahead and get a camera down. This is going to be directly behind our puppet, like so, maybe why didn't the FOV or something, I'm not sure, give us a greater field of view. Then we are going to go ahead and put our puppet in our superhero pose, so we're going to get a keyframe, that's going to go ahead and open up our puppet, get everything rotated, so I'm going to select the feet as well. No, did not want to do that. That is not proper. Okay, that is pretty weird. That should not be happening. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and rotate him 90 degrees. Like so. And then get his arm in a superhero pose. I'm going to turn off Puppet Mirror. plug that in from our AND gate as well. We're going to plug our camera into the AND gate. Next we want to set up our controls for the advanced rotator, I think. I'm not sure how we're going to end up having this work. Um, let me just try the same method from here. So Y would be left and right, so we want that to be left and right on our sticks, but I don't feel like that's going to work properly. So we just want up and down and left and right. So if we go ahead and open this up, we can see up and down is going to be X and then Y is going to be left and right. So I'm going to actually make it local space and I'm going to apply. We want the Y to be up. X to be right on our little thing here, and we're probably going to need a local left stick instead. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and copy this left stick node, bring it down. And this is gonna be left stick local. And then we're gonna go ahead and plug in our local left stick from the controller sensor. Go ahead and open it up. And open up the page three. And we got left stick local right here. That's gonna plug into the uh, microchip that we just made, the node for. This is gonna plug into another splitter, so copy the splitter that we have previously. Left stick local is gonna plug into that. We're gonna open up the properties of the advanced rotator. Turn up rotation strength to 100% and turn up dampening all the way. I think, yeah, we should be fine. Okay. And then left and right is going to go ahead and plug into Y. And up and down is going to plug into X. And we want to make the Z axis speed zero. All right. Let's see if that works as I expected to. No, well, kind of. Yeah, but we have to do something about rotating up and down because it's not wanting to do that as I expected. So get left and right, up and down. We want the arrow and the mover here face forward and Y needs to face up that way we'll do go forward and then our left and right is actually reversed so we're gonna make this Y axis speed negative 180 degrees instead of 180 degrees then of course we have the issue that you can't move up and down that's actually caused from the puppet itself. So if we go ahead and open up this keyframe, I'm actually going to record the data for the arms because it's not actually positioning the way I want it to. And we're going to scope out, open up the properties of our puppet here. And I'm going to shrink the shape as well as change the position first off. Increase the width a bit. And what else? Turn off the procedural animation, maybe that'll fix it. If not, we're gonna have to turn off movable, which is unfortunate because then it's um I think we might be able to move through things, even if it's collidable, but I'm not sure. Okay, well. I think I turned that off on accident or something, yeah. We want that to be recorded. There we go. There we go. And now, we can fly through the rings, like so. It's a little bit more difficult than I imagined it would be, but we did it. Probably because the... Oh, why did we die? <laughs> not sure why we died. I think it might be the fall height thing. Let's see here. Well, I want the camera to be more far back. First of all, and secondly, um, what else could we add to this? I guess we could so add sounds. We could. Not sure. Not sure. Well, can we collide with the ground? We can collide with ground. Okay. What about a wall? What happens if we run into a wall? Let's test that. Let's do a little bit of debugging. We can go straight through a wall. Unfortunately, I think you might be SOL on that. Turn back on movable, what happens? 
you know, we can't go through it now, but we also can't rotate up and down. That seems to be a bug. So, let's see here. There's a couple things that we could try. We could make it so the player itself is animated. So, basically, I'm not sure. That wouldn't be easy to do. say it's a bug because I feel like it should still be able to collide I know for a fact there is a bug with puppets that if you make them not movable they aren't collidable at all like if we for example make them not movable and then we get a cube out and drop it on their head it's gonna phase right through. So I know that's a bug. I know for a fact that's a bug, but I don't know if it would be the same for, for example, if we made a cube and then made it not movable, still collidable, and then tried to make it pass through that wall, what would happen? Yeah, it just passes straight through. So that's the behavior that we would still expect with this, even with that one bug of things falling through it or not being able to collide with it, even if it is set to collidable and not movable. So let me try... Hmm. If we... We're going to have to animate this, unfortunately. It's the only way I can think of to make this work. And also, that's going to make this mover pretty difficult to do what we want. I'm not sure. Oh man, this is what I get for buying an early access game, isn't it? No. No, 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 don't say that, don't say that. Of course we can fix this. In fact, I think the easiest way to fix this is not by doing any complex stuff. We're just gonna make a switch. Turn this on. And we're gonna go ahead and make it... We're gonna make it not movable with this keyframe still. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a laser scope out. And we want this laser scope not active in order to actually move forward. So we're going to get this knot gate. And we're going to hook up this laser scope to the knot gate. And we're going to co uh, we copied this knot gate from up here to be clear. And then this knock gate is going to hook up to a, another port on our AND gate to turn everything on. Well, not to turn anything, everything on, but I guess another knock gate, AND gate, I mean. And that's going to go ahead and plug into, let's say, our, yeah, I guess power port makes sense. So the result from our previous AND gate is going to plug into our new AND gate. Then our new knot gate that's hooked up to our laser scope is going to hook up to the new AND gate. And this AND gate is going to hook up into the power of our mover. And then our laser scope, we want to set this up so it's set up in front of our player. And it's going to point directly forward, like so. And we're going to go ahead and scale it down so it's not too big, not too small, and we're going to do the labels mode, has to be collidable, 
And it can be either visible or not visible. It just has to be collidable. So now we're not going to be able to thrust when we detect something in front of us. Oh, i got to turn off this keyframe now. Leave that switch. And is it movable by default? Yep. Okay. Alright. And we still phase through the wall. Why is that? I should not be able to phase through the wall. Why is that? Laser scope. You know what? Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and move it back a bit. Then extend it. And what did I set this up to be? Both. It just has to be collidable. Okay. So it should technically work, right? Oh, you know what? I think we should actually just hook this up to our thrust rather than turning it off or else we're going to get... Um, we're getting drift. That's what we're getting. We're drifting forward. We don't want to drift forward. We just want to, you know, stop. We don't want to be able to thrust anymore. So I'm hooking up the R2 output to our AND gate instead of the, AND, the previous AND gate that turns on everything. So and then we're hooking the, that AND gate back up to the mover. And we're deleting the new AND gate's output to the mover, and then we hooked up our new AND gate to the speed, forward speed, and we just deleted the R2 input to that. So now, should technically work, right? Yep. We cannot go through this wall. Unless we come at a really weird angle, I guess. It still works, pretty much. Um, one thing that I want, this is entirely your preference, but I like to invert our control for going up and down, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm setting this to negative 180 degrees for X. And one more thing is I'm going to use the L1, or not the L1, but the, yeah, the L1 and R2, R1 to... Um, rotate on our Z at C, because that is a thing that we're probably going to want to worry about. So I'm going to add another AND gate, so I'm going to copy one over. I'm going to unplug or delete the wire coming out of our combiner here to go into our advanced mover up here. I'm going to plug it into our new AND gate. Then this NOT gate that we have, that's powering our advanced mover with the AND gate here. That's also going to plug into our input here for AND gate. Well, actually, I don't even think we need to do that. Right, so let's just undo that. <laughs> and this combiner here is going to plug into our Z-axis input of our advanced rotator. And let's see if that works. It does work. Nice. Cool. Now we can fly like Superman. We can fly like, I don't know, Minecraft creative mode. So, yeah, I hope you liked this tutorial. We got it pretty well done now. If you got any more questions on stuff like this, I guess, go ahead and ask away. I feel like we did this pretty well. 160 points. Well, I got all of them. Didn't run into that hazard cube. I'd say these controls work pretty well. Dun, 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 dun. There is that issue though, which is because we don't have a ground and we're flying downwards. Um, I don't know why it doesn't really do it with this mode. Maybe if we fall down like this, we'll do it. No? Yes. Okay. Maybe it's because we were up there and then we did it. Yeah, okay. 
So that can be avoided by one of two things. We can just simply delete this wire here in the controller section from fell out of scene. Or we can go to gameplay gear, global settings, pop this bad boy down, open up the properties, and adjust fall height. We can increase this to 100 meters, and that should give us a lot more room to play with in it while flying. That is. And that jiggle right there, thats I think that's because we're be being stopped by ourselves. So we can probably fix that with just by moving the um, ray cast, or laser scope as you call it. So let's go ahead and do that. Or we could make it so it doesn't detect friends. So we open up the puppet lab labels by opening up the puppet properties with L1 and square, go to the label section, make it a friend. Then we can open up the properties of the laser scope, make it not detect friends. There we go. Now it won't detect the puppet itself. Missed a couple that time, but hey, that's fine. Love this Superman flying. It's pretty good. Alright, everybody. Hope you liked that tutorial. Have a nice day, everyone. Like, Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, I've got a Patreon, so if you want to support me on that, become a part of my uh, Patreon Discord server. They can ask questions, all to your heart's content, private help, basically. Go ahead and do that. Support me on Patreon. Bye, everybody. Have a nice day.